Hi, I'm Tamar Zama, and in this video I'm going to share with you almost everything you need to know about SPLCs. What is the SPLC? What does the SPLC stand for? How are people using this instrument for their benefit as a collateral, as a way to get a line of credit loan on it? How do you get SPLCs if you've got a line of credit on it? How does it work in the monetization program? I'm going to cover how to get payments on it, how frequently you can, how frequently you can get on uh, frequently you can get it. Uh, payments on it as well as all the different frauds that's going on some of the codes for you to know that you know that this is a fraudulent SBLC or the provider you're working with is a fraud and then how do you hopefully authenticate it So, a little bit about almost about uh, everything you need to know about SBLCs. First of all, my name is Tim Rizan from MyCredit.ai, and I'm not going to share everything I know about SBLCs. Some of it is our own intellectual property on how we have helped companies leverage it, and unfortunately, the information is not available on, on a public domain. However, I want to share with you a, like about 80% of everything you do need to know about SBLCs and how to leverage them for your benefit. Right credit AI, there's three categories that I say we are best in class and we have an unfair competitive advantage on. One is everything to do with banking instruments. We're very good at uh, helping our clients acquire banking instruments at below market prices. We're extremely good at monetizing standby orders of credit, documentary orders of credit, bank guarantees, MTNs, I can go on and on and on and on. Uh, that says category one is everything to do with banking instruments. Second is that we are a private lender. We do help clients get access to lines of credit. And the third one is we assist companies or specific clients in uh, participating in private placement programs. And what I mean by that is we do a really good job in forensic background checking using former FBI and CI agents. We're not a broker. We don't promote uh, private placement programs and so on. But rather we provide background checking of the platform uh, and then help clients get access to loans, lines of credit if they want to participate in a private pl uh, placement program that we have authenticated let out. But today I want to talk about uh, SBLCs, what SBLC uh, is, what it stands for, how to leverage it, how to get a line of credit on it, how to receive payments on it, how does financing of it work, different types of SBLC, uh, SWIFT formats, and so on. Uh, before I move on, I'm going to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. This way you get access to our intellectual property, some of our content, and it will help you accomplish some of your business goals. SBLC, what does SBLC stand for? Uh, SBLC stands for Stand by Letter of Credit, uh, and it's a letter of credit that a bank is issuing on behalf of their customer to a seller of a product or service Generally speaking, that's how it was originally invented to use. Uh, today, I've seen lots of different ways of humanity thinking creatively about how to benefit SBLCs for their own benefit, including including a business owner uh, who had an affair and his wife found out, and as a way to protect his assets and cash, he called his bank, uh, turned a good chunk of his cash into an SBLC, and with his mistress, he disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> so, I can tell you the, the legitimate reasons why SBLC was invented, and I can share some horror stories on how human creativity has changed in original ways and reasons why it was invented. <laughs> so, um, how does the SBLC work? <laughs> so, first way it works is assuming that I... Um, I, I gave an example in 2020, in March of 2020, uh, oil prices, after a very historic long time, actually hit a negative territory. Producers of oil, 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 of oil were paying people like you and I to store oil. They just needed somebody to store it because the market wasn't buying it for a short period of time. And the demand wasn't that hot. And so... Uh, a very rich individual in Toronto decided to buy a storage tanker to store oil 
and this switch anchor cost $25 million and this person was in Toronto, Canada. The seller of the storage tanker was in South Africa and so the person in Toronto is now going to pay $25 million to some complete stranger, to some complete stranger company in South Africa who he's never met. It's just not going to happen. The guy who's making a $25 million oil storage tanker is not going to make the product send it to that guy in Toronto hoping and praying that when he gets there his credit card is going to swipe and he's going to get 25 million bucks like that's not going to happen so how do you solve for a problem where the buyer of a product doesn't I don't want to use the word trust but I don't have a better word to use right now doesn't trust the uh, manufacturer and the manufacturer says doesn't trust the buyer like how do you solve for that specifically if they're also in two different legal jurisdictions with two different governing laws so standby of credit solves for that issue standby of credit uh, leveraging or using standby of credit the buyer in this case the person who is purchasing 25 million dollar standby of credit generally speaking picks up the phone calls their bank not retail banking generally speaking is commercial banking and they tell their banking officer hey mr banking officer i have I don't know, 100 million dollars cash in the bank account. I want you to issue a 25 million dollar standby of credit to the manufacturer of this or uh, this um, storage tanker for me. So banker will then take 100 million dollars that's sitting in the client's bank account, freezes, to blocks 25 million dollars, gets a, issues a standby of credit where the beneficiary is the guy in South Africa. The standby letter of credit, gen generally speaking, not always is cash back, is unconditional, is transferable. Like there's a whole world around languaging of it. You can you can go to LiveCredit.ai, go to our online store, and purchase some of the highest LTV uh, SBSCs that we have seen in the marketplace so far. Just as a side note to that. So the receiving uh, the the shipper, the guy who's manufacturing the standby letter of credit. The, uh, Soy Shanker can now get a piece of paper that says he's a beneficiary of the SBLC. And what that means is that on payment day, if the client doesn't pay for the standby, the uh, Soy Shanker, he can now go and display that to the bank and actually get the uh, get the $25 million. So now it gives him assurance. It gives him, um, he knows that now he can actually get that $25 million. Now, what most people do is actually don't do that. They actually issue the same amount of credit, and on payment day, the guy doesn't come and swipe a $25 million credit card swipe or something. What they do is they actually do display it to the bank and get that um, get their cash out. There's, by the way, 5,000 variations to what I just told you. I'm just giving you the high-level information on how SBLC works. So now if you are the, uh, the guy who is manufacturing storage tankers, in this case in South Africa, you have an order. It's so for $25 million order you have to build a product. But taking that product and building is fine. At some point you need cash. You need to take that storage tanker and put it in a ship. The ship is not going to work on Atlantic Trail and Hope. The ship wants cash right now because they need to transport it from South Africa to Canada. So how do you finance this? So what some companies do is they say, I have a $25 million instrument. I need cash right now, so let me sell it to whoever who is going to give me the highest LTV. Lana Credit gets calls by companies in places like South Africa, as an example, where the client has a SBLC documentary, Lana Credit Bank Guarantee, some kind of a banking instrument, and they want to sell it. And part of what are, one of our services or one of, your, one of the things we're very good at is funding, uh, helping our clients get a bank or institution that will buy that instrument from them at a high LTV. So that's one option the client has. The guy in South Africa has a second option. The second option is he says, you know what, I have this instrument, awesome. I need to hire people. I need to build another uh, plant. I need to pay the shipper to ship the product out. And so what I need to is to maybe I want to borrow money on it. So what they do is they come to institutions like line of credit and they say I have a $25 million standby of credit. Can you go get me a loan? Or can you invest money in my company because I have a $25 million instrument? So what we do at line of credit is we actually take the instrument, we put it down with our bank, 
as collateral we get an extension to our line of credit for let's say 50 100 million 125 million whatever the business case justifies and then we resell that money to our client so if you are the South African company you have let's say I want to take the word 25 million out and you replace this with the word 100 million because in the story it just makes it a bit easier to understand so let's assume you have a hundred million dollar instrument you can sell for cash and let's say you can get 70 million dollars loan to value highest company highest LTVs you get 70 70 million dollars so that's cash you can get and that's the end of that whoever who's paying you the uh, 70 million is now on the maturity date of that instrument going to the bank of the Canadian guy giving the hundred million dollars and then they're pocketing 30 million dollars in profit so that's that's part of how a monetizer makes money the second model is, and in our case, not credit.ai, you're now giving the, the 100 million dollar instrument to a line of credit.ai, we're leveraging it, and we're giving you a line of credit loan for 400 million or some number like that. So either you get 70 million or you can get 400 million dollars in form of a loan. The third option companies have, going back to the owner in South Africa, he now has an order to place, and let's assume he's got a 100 million dollar instrument. He now needs to figure out, okay, I need cash on this. How do I do it? He may want to go into something called private placement program or joint venture program where somebody else has the cash or private placement program where he wants to leverage that instrument. And now using the pen on which structure he goes into, and that's something we can also help you to get into safely, is you can now get, let's say, $100 million dollars stand out of credit going into a secure platform could generate a hundred million dollars every month for you for a period of 10 months that you can get in form of a non-recourse loan so going back to your third option is you can get a hundred million dollars every month for 10 months or you can sell your instrument and get 90 you know say 70 million dollars cash on it and that's the end of that and you can build your storage tanker put money have money to send a ship like that or you can get a loan uh, and get let's say 400 500 million dollar loan using that instrument so that's pretty much those are the ways that somebody can leverage a standby of credit and how it works for their business one question we get is how does monetization of the SBSC works uh, how do you receive that SBSC to leverage your instrument for your benefit so on the monetization of the instrument any monetizer you want to go to including a lot of credit.ai or any of our competitors first of all you need some paperwork you need a CIS if you're putting this down out of credit on behalf of your corporation if somehow you this is coming from you personally you need a KYC so you need a CIS or KYC then you need the actual copy of the instrument if you try to get a loan on it you need to provide a business plan on it if you just try to monetize it and are going to a private placement program or a trade or capital enhancement program uh, you, all you need is pretty much you know, the CIS, KYC, and a copy of the instrument. That's all you need. Uh, then what you want to do is that the monetizer will then give you a, a deed of agreement that will dictate what it is, how they're going to leverage it to accomplish your business goals. You want to make sure that you understand exactly how much money you're going to get, when you're going to get it, how you're going to get it. You want to know all your SWIFT codes. You want to make sure that nothing is fraudulent in that activity. Generally speaking, one of the services we offer, and I don't mean this to be advertising, but we do background checking on private placement programs or credit enhancement programs to make sure whoever who's monetizing that instrument for you is totally legit. What is the SBLC payment and how does SBLC financing work? Is typically whoever who's monetizing that instrument, let's say 100 million turns into 400 million, generally speaking, not and always don't give you 400 million 60 banking days after. What they're doing is they're using that instrument. Uh, so let's say if you give it with, with HSBC London as, as an example, you provide a $100 million instrument to HSBC London. HSBC London is leveraging that internally between their own departments, between, between their own credit financing uh, departments, leveraging it for their own benefit. And out of that, they're providing with a line of credit. They're providing with a loan. They're providing with the cash or something like that. And that's pretty much how the financing piece of it works. The bank that's receiving it, uh, and I've seen a lot of this with DBS Singapore, HSBC London, like I've seen a lot of this, is that they will 
create a financing program that's best suited for your business needs, but also for how they can leverage it. And then the payments are usually a function of the financing arrangements you have. I have seen clients, uh, for instance, in the United States, who upon giving the SBLC, they are, they are in some kind of a business where they need some kind of a cash right away. They can't wait for the monetization to happen on day 60, day 90, whatever. And so the instrument gets monetized within the first 10 banking days, and the client will take some kind of a cash to immediately get the breeding cash they need to breed in their business and then they wait for the installment payments to come in after the instruments being fully monetized. Uh, what are the different SBLC uh, SWIFT formats? So here's some, some warnings I want to share with you. If you, on paper you ever, ever, ever see a SWIFT MT103, generally speaking, and I don't want this to become a 100 hour YouTube video, is, is fraud. It's just complete fraud. Uh, if you ever get something with an MT103, please, please, please pick up the phone, call FBI, call the White Call Crime Division, and, and just report that right away. Uh, you will see the ones that are not fraudulent, you'll see an MT760, you'll see other formats that is a lot more, uh, it's legal. And if you don't have a resource, uh, Landcred.ai in our online store, we do have security uh, resources where you can hire our uh, former FBI CI resources on an hourly basis to simply look at an instrument and help verify it for you. Uh, if there's a fresh cut SBLC, uh, typically there's a ISI number, a QCIP number that the provider provides you that where you can authenticate it. If this, uh, I don't want to use a fresh cut, fresh cut, like an instantly, the SBLC just came out this morning like that. If you, if there's no ISI number, QCIP number, you probably want to look for something called treasury notes. Again, if this is the area that you need help in, please reach out to us. We offer, uh, as much as we are really a private equity firm and I don't want to get into this line of business, we do get a lot of inquiries on it and we do have some resources to support you on that. Two questions I have for you, our viewers. Number one is, assuming the content that we're giving you here is somewhat valuable, would you have any challenges um, you know, concerning us as a trusted resource? Is that a, unlike, you know, is that a, is, you know, would you be willing to consider we are a, we are a trusted resource in this space? My second question to you is, if we are a trusted resource in this space, would you consider subscribing to our YouTube channel? Those are the two questions. Are we a trusted resource? Would you be willing to consider we are? And the second question is, if you are, would you consider subscribing to our YouTube channel? Uh, my name is Tamar Zan from LightCredit.ai. People always ask me, Tamar, how can you help us with our instruments, with our banking needs, and so on? And the answer is in three ways. Number one area that we are what I call best in class, and we have an unfair competitive advantage in the marketplace, is monetizing banking instruments. Whether you want us to help acquire an instrument for you, generally speaking, we can get a, uh, a deep discount compared to what I've seen in the marketplace. Uh, but really, it's monetizing instrument you have. You may have a MTN, a bank guarantee, SBLC, documentary that of credit like that, and you want it to be monetized. Typically, we can get a higher LTV compared to what our competitors can get or what our clients can get. We can do a transaction a lot, lot faster, generally speaking, one to three banking days, where sometimes our comparison will take seven to ten banking days. This doesn't happen all the time, generally speaking. Uh, second line, like, line of business that I would say we have an unfair competitive advantage is line of credit. We can provide lines of credit loans, investment capitals to our clients. Um, really, really, really in a nutshell, what we do is we provide our capital with a bank, uh, so that that bank has the cash it needs to give our clients access to cash that our clients couldn't get. Assuming you could qualify for $1 million, as example, by yourself on a business expansion you need, well, with Rent a Rich Uncle program as as example, we can go put up $12 million of our money with a bank, and that bank would then take $10 million of the $12 million and give it to you, and that would be the condition we put up $12 million with, with that bank. So now our client can get $10 million, where before that they would get $1 million. So that's the unfair competitive advantage that I like to think that we have in the marketplace. The bank benefits, because it's fractional reserve, if you know something about fractional lending, they now have $12 million from us, they lend our client 10, they keep a delta of two, they, they lend that $2 million to their existing customers, 
and that two million comes back with interest and then they relend that money and they make hundreds of millions of dollars on that additional two that we get. So we are very good at that. Uh, third one, third service that we offer that's very unique is that we have a lot of clients who want to get into private placement programs. They understand there's a lot of fraud going on in that industry as well as SPLCs. So they retain our former FBI, CIA agents to do forensic background checking. Uh, we are definitely, I like to think, one of the leading providers in this space in terms of doing background forensic checking, providing lines of credit. Uh, we're certainly a provider of SBLCs or SBLC multi uh, like that. My name is Samuel Sam from Line of Credit. I, I hope you, you found this video enjoyable. I'd love for you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and I look forward to the opportunity of working with you.